Hi everyone, today I'm here to tell you the most important things you need to know about nuclear energy. When I'm talking about nuclear energy today, I'm talking about large scale commercial nuclear energy that we've been using for decades to power electricity around the world. Nuclear energy is used solely to produce electricity. It provides 10% of the global electricity mix, 20% of the, the US electricity mix, but the US is actually the largest producer of nuclear energy in the world by a, by a lot. It produces almost a third of the nuclear energy in the world. And you can see it's almost double the next two countries, France and China, both in the amount of nuclear energy it's producing and then the number of reactors that we have here in the, in the United States. But it's not the biggest portion of our electricity mix here in the United States. Places like France, have, have a larger share of nuclear energy in their electricity mix. And you can see there's over 11 countries that depend on nuclear power for at least 30% of their electricity generation. So it's a big portion of their electricity mix. So today we're gonna to be talking about how it works. And we're talking about the power of the atom. So I've got my atom earrings on, I've got my atom shirt on with this, this lovely atom joke that you can tell your friends. Because nuclear energy is the power of the atom. What we are doing is using nuclear binding energy to provide heat in a process called fission. So what is fission? We have a fissile atom. It's a large atom that when you hit it with a neutron, it breaks apart and releases that nuclear binding energy in the form of heat, also releases neutrons that can go and hit other fissile atoms and cause a chain reaction. So there's two key terms that you should take away from a, a, a nuclear reaction. Fissile is a atom that is capable of capturing that neutron and undergoing fission. A fertile atom, after capturing a couple neutrons, becomes fissile. And so these are important when we're talking about nuclear energy. The typical fuel we use for nuclear energy is uranium. And it's extremely, extremely energy dense. This is one of the benefits of nuclear energy. So a nuclear fuel pellet, which is about the size of a pencil eraser, that contains the same amount of energy as three and a half barrels of oil or 1,700 pounds of coal. And if you can't picture 1,700 pounds of coal, that's about a bison worth of coal, all packed into a tiny eraser-sized pellet. If we're talking about the fuel requirements of a power plant, these power plants, nuclear power plants are often big. The Diablo Canyon power plant, which I, which I have behind me, has two nuclear reactors, and each of those is a gigawatt. And so if you were powering one of those reactors, a gigawatt power plant for a year, you would need a, one single rail car of uranium. Or if it was a coal-fired power plant, you'd need 21,000 rail cars of coal, extremely energy dense. Most of the uranium in the world comes from Kazakhstan, and this has been a growing supplier of, of world uranium, now providing over 40% of the world's uranium. That uranium we get out of the ground is not ready to put into a power plant. We have to do a process called enrichment. And what we're doing with enrichment is we're increasing the portion of, that is that fissile U-235, the fissile uranium. We need a bigger portion of that amongst the fertile U-238 uranium. So the natural uranium we get out of the ground is, is less than 1% that fissile material that can, that can do the chain reaction. What we need for our power plants, we need to enrich that so that it's three to 5% of that fissile material. Now this is not weapons grade. Weapons grade uranium, what we would use in a bomb, you need to enrich it further to over 90% uranium. And so when auditors are often looking at countries on whether they're doing peaceful enrichment or weapons grade enrichment, they're looking for this difference. Are they just enriching to low enriched uranium or are they going all the way to weapons grade uranium? We then take that and we put it in our nuclear power plant. And after that, we're just taking the heat of this nuclear reaction and it operates just like any other steam cycle power plant. We're taking the heat, we're creating steam, turning a turbine, turning a generator and creating electricity. The difference is a nuclear power plant is a lot more complex because the safety requires redundancy uh, from, the, from the nuclear reaction. So to find your way around a nuclear power plant, here is a very famous nuclear power plant. You have your nuclear reactors, that's where the nuclear reaction is happening. You have your control center that is operating the, the plant. 
you often see these big towers. Those are cooling towers. Those are cooling towers that are used at large scale power plants. They are not specific to nuclear. It is water vapor coming out of that. You don't have to use this kind of technology for a nuclear power plant, but often in our minds, it's associated with nuclear power plant. Diablo Canyon behind me uses ocean water for the cooling, so they do not have cooling towers like this. You also see a lot of security at a nuclear power plant because of the, the terrorist concerns, the radioactive concerns um, at a nuclear power plant. So the benefits of nuclear energy, why do people get so excited about it? Big ones, no greenhouse gas emissions, no air pollution, we talked about it being energy dense and we run these very, very well. So they have a lot of uptime, they're contributing a lot of electricity production. So those are the benefits. Downsides, there are many. There's a lot of challenges with nuclear power. I'm gonna focus in on two, the radioactive waste and the accidents. So we have radioactive waste that comes in our nuclear power plants that is highly radioactive for hundreds of thousands of years. And we do not have a solution to protect people and the environment for hundreds of thousands of years. So what do we do with our nuclear waste? First, we put it into an on-site pool, allow it to cool down for, for five to 10 years. Then we put it into to, uh, concrete casks that are metal lined concrete casks that we think are gonna last a hundred plus years. We don't really know, they're not at end of life yet. And we do not have a long-term solution. We've looked at many uh, here in the US and other countries around the world of underground burial but you really need to keep water away from our nuclear waste to protect people in the environment. We do not have a long-term hundred thousands of years solution to that. One thing that you can do to lessen the amount of nuclear waste you have to deal with is reprocessing. That's basically recycling our waste and reusing it as fuel and power plants. That is illegal in the United States because here the, the government has, has concerns about nuclear proliferation, meaning that that the reprocessing process actually makes it easier to use the plutonium in the nuclear waste for weapons. And so reprocessing is done in France and Europe. It is not allowed in the United States. So let's talk about nuclear accidents. This often comes up in terms of, of fears about nuclear power. And so there are three I would say key nuclear accidents that have happened. Nuclear accidents are low probability. They don't happen very often. We are very careful with our nuclear power plants, but when they do happen, they can have very big consequences. So the first key accident actually happened in the, in the United States. It was the most serious accident that has happened in the United States in 1979 at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania. No injuries, no deaths, but there was enough fear that it stopped the nuclear energy industry in the US. There has been no significant new builds in the US since then. The most serious accident in the world was Chernobyl in 1986, a significant radioactive release. The area is still radioactive. It was just recently covered lots of associated impacts and deaths from that accident. And then the most recent major accident was in Fukushima. Again, not, not a lot of injuries or deaths, but a lot of fear. Um, there was radioactive release that was seen around the world. It has changed nuclear policy in countries around the world. And so we're seeing the, the impact of that change in nuclear policy. There's been significant growth in recent years for nuclear power in China, but places like the United States, Europe, and Japan, especially following Fukushima, nuclear energy is declining. In the US in particular, this nuclear fleet is old. We stopped building them in the late seventies. They need upgrades, they're at the end of life. They cannot compete in our wholesale markets with natural gas, wind and solar. And so we are not seeing, we are seeing nuclear power plants shut down and we're not seeing new builds come in place in, in the United States. So that's the biggest things you need to know about commercial nuclear power. If you wanna know more in depth, please check out our in-depth videos about nuclear energy. If you wanna know about future nuclear energy, small modular reactors or fusion energy, we have, we have videos about that or check out other topics by returning to our homepage. And thanks for learning a few things about nuclear energy.